Okay, Coach, opening statement on this past week for the Lumberjacks. Yeah, it was uh, two really good performances um, against two teams that are really difficult to deal with. Obviously, Southeastern have been on a, on a really good run, and Corpus were unbeaten. Um, only lost two games all year, so it's two really difficult teams to play against. And, um, and playing at home, I think, is a massive advantage for us. And um, But yeah, it was two really good performances, two clean sheets, which is a massive thing. And especially against teams who, who are really good from set pieces to only give away two corners in, in, in 180 minutes is really, really impressive. So, uh, yeah, it was, and then on the other side of it, we scored some really good goals, um, which are really impressive as a whole team part, but I thought we controlled both of the games for the most part, which is, which is something that we, we always want to see. I'll give you, I, we didn't talk about this question before, so sorry for throwing you a little bit off guard. Um, I'm bringing up, I'm giving you a little bit of flowers and then segueing it to kind of where we're at in the season. Um, listening to the broadcasts, um, our broadcasters were completely mentioning kind of the 180 that at this point in the season the program has really overtaken. So again, props to you. Um, but you're at the central point of this season where you had this mat or these two matchups where it's in conference play and you're spearheading at the top like the really top portions of the competition when it comes to, all right, with everybody has a few conference games underneath their belt. It's kind of forming into what is making the pinnacle of a really yep. good program. Um, so how do you sustain that? And then was there really any amplified talk or if was it, which I'm kind of expecting you to say, was it business as usual and mm -hmm. let's just keep on keeping on? Yeah, we, I mean, we don't, even when we, with 25 minutes to go yesterday, it was, when we got to the water break, it was to the players to forget about the score. It's what we do and the, and the little little habits that we have and the details that we have, forget about the score and just go play. Um, and that's the same thing every week. We work on ourselves Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we're on to Incarnate Word on Thursday um, and, then, and then move on to there. But mention of conference tables, league tables, any of that, what other teams do, it's not in our control. Um, winning isn't in our control. We just do what we do and hopefully positive performance leads to a positive result. And, we just keep on keep on the same way and focus on the next focus on us, then focus on the next game and recovery and then just repeat and the, the league table wins, everything will take care of itself hopefully. Keep on chopping. Yep. Amanda? Hunter talks about that complete one eighty and you see it in the stats. I looked this morning and we have the second highest scoring offense in the nation. Yeah. Second only to Arkansas who is leading the SEC right now. So what does that say for your program? At A and it's Obviously, it's a massive achievement so far, um, and it is getting that kind of being up there with any any sort of top half in the nation. Never mind top ten. Never mind top two is is an, an unbelievable achievement for our players. Um, and I think it just goes for not the two or three people who start up there. Is we have a lot of depth um, in our front line, a lot of depth in our attacking midfielders, and and, and especially with the defenders that we have as well. We just I think it showed this weekend we played 20 players yesterday or 22 players yesterday and, and everyone can play significant minutes and played significant roles so far in the whole program but it's it's an impressive start and it's I'm, I'm happy for our players because they've deserved it and how hard they've worked and um, hopefully that continues um, with the hard work it's it's a stat that's good to look on but we've got to move on with it as well but it's a really impressive I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the players I'm really really happy for them. You talk about the depth. Um, we saw that on the offense and the defensive end this weekend with Alex Bayou coming in mm -hmm. as a sub in both games and getting the game-winning goals in both games and scoring her first three collegiate goals. And then you've also got a freshman, Sierra McClure, in net for you guys. She's started the last four games, four wins. Two of them have been shutouts, clean sheets. What does that say to your freshmen especially? Yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of freshmen that have picked up picked up a lot of minutes this year and done a really good job and Alex and Tara are both two players that, that we kind of picked up late in the process and um, I've knew Sierra since she was 11, a <laughs> coach there in club and, um, and obviously we knew kind of Alex from, from, from some of the connections in Oklahoma as well and we knew Alex was always going to score, it was just a matter of time, she come close a couple of times and it just, but the Sierra as well stayed, stayed patient and worked really hard and she's took an opportunity when she's come and that's with every player, it's the same thing with Alex, she's worked really hard and does a lot of extra after training um, and, and it's it's paid off but it's the same thing once you get your opportunity you take it and, and, and I'm proud of both of them for that. A uh, significant night for your program but also just significant night for soccer programs across the nation yes. uh, for your pink game uh, raising awareness for breast cancer encourage fans to wear pink 
uh, to that game. That's just my personal nod. Yeah. Uh, but just uh, also taking on Incarnate Word, um, just preview that matchup and then all the extracurriculars that go with the game. Yeah, I think Pink Games are a hugely significant night. I mean, the month of October, obviously, but Pink Games are a significant night in, in raising awareness for breast cancer and, and hopefully getting pre-screenings and everything that you want to do as, 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 much, as much as we can do to, to raise that awareness is always really important. Um, especially in, in, in any sort of life, but obviously in, in, in women's soccer is, is really important to us. So hopefully we can have a lot of people wear pink and, and, and raise enough awareness of that and do some things in the, in the build up this week. Um, but in kind of Word, on to kind of Word, there's another good team, different different challenge than what we've had in this past weekend. Really good in possession. Jake's a good coach and he's turning that program around as well. And But they're in good possession. They're going to give us some different questions that we have to answer. But um, it's, it's going to be another good game. I know they've been really 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 tight and really unlucky in some games they've played this year and they could be very much at the top of the table um, and, and it's just swung the, the wrong way for them and had some unlucky bounces so but they're a really good team and um, so it's going to present a much different challenge so we have to answer some questions for this week. Lumberjacks concluding the homestand for their three games uh, against Incarnate Word this Friday night at 5 30. Um, just come out to the chopping block. It's a really good time to jump on the Lumberjack Absolutely. Soccer bandwagon, Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. We would love you to have you there. All right. Thanks for the time, Coach. No worries. Action.